Live stream and recording. <coughs> I live in Washington, D.C. There's things going on this week where there are people in front of the lot of One says this is more important to hear my word tongue. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, which is entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely, and we're reading text number 16. <coughs> Yat, Yat, Doshu, Doshu, Ma Pranihitam, Guru, Mishma, Arna, Natri, Trigarta, Shalya, Shindhava, Balika, Adyai, Ashtrani, Amogha, Mahimani, Hirup, Pitani, Pitani, Na, Upash Prishu, Rehari Dasham, Eva, Asurani, Yadro Shuma Pranitam, Guru Bhishma Karna, Yadro Shuma Pranitam, Guru Bhishma Karna. Natri Trigarta Shaya Shain Tava Bali Kadyai Ashtran Yamoka Mahimani Nirupitani No Pas Prishurri Hari Dashami Vasurani No Pas Prishurri Hari Dashami Vasurani Yado Shuma Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Yado Shuma Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Natri Trikarta Shaya Shandha Babali Kadyai Natri Trikarta Shaya Shandha Babali Kadyai 
Ashtranyamohamahimani Nirupitani Ashtranyamohamahimani Nirupitani No Pashpishur Nihari Dasami Vasurani No Pashpishur Nihari Dasami Vasurani Yadoshima Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Yadoshima Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Natri Trikarta Shaya Sainthaiva Balika Gyai Natri Trikarta Shaya Sainthaiva Balika Gyai Ashtranya Moha Mahimani Nirupitani Ashtranya Moha Mahimani Nirupitani No Pashpi Shurri Hari Dasami Vasurani No Pashpi Shurri Hari Dasami Vasurani Yadoshuma Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Yadoshuma Pranitam Guru Vishma Karna Astrani Moga Mahimani Nirupitani Astrani Moga Mahimani Nirupitani Lopas Prishuna Hiridasam Nivasurani Lopas Prishuna Hiridasam Nivasurani Yadho Shuma Pranihitam Guru Bhishma Karna Yadho Shuma Pranihitam Guru Bhishma Karna Natri Trigarthi Shaya Sainda Baba Kajai Natri Trigarthi Shaya Sainda Baba Kajai Astrani Moga Mahimani Nirupitani Astrani Moga Mahimani Nirupitani Nopashprishudri Haridasam Vivasurani Ladies. Yadoshuma pranitam guru bishma karna. Yadoshuma pranitam guru bishma karna. Natri trigarta shalya san daiva bali kadyai. Natri trigarta shalya san daiva bali kadyai. Ashtranya moga mahimani nirupitani. Ashtranya moga mahimani nirupitani. One more? Anybody else? Myself being situated. Myself being situated. Guru. Guru. Dronacharya. Dronacharya. Bhishma. 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 Karna. 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 Natri. Natri. Burishrava. Burishrava. Trigarta. Trigarta. King Shusharma. King Shusharma. Shalya. 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 Shaindhava. Shaindhava. King Jayadra. King Jayadratha. Malika. Malika. Brother of Maharaj Shatanu. Brother of Maharaj Shantanu. Bhishma's father. Bhishma's father. Adyai. Adyai. Etc. Etc. Ashtrani. Ashtrani. Weapons. Weapons. Amogha. Amogha. Invincible. Invincible. Mahimani. Mahimani. Very powerful. Very powerful. Nirupitani. Nirupitani. Applied. Applied. Na. Na. Nat. Nat. Upas prishur. Upas prishur. Touch. Touch. Nirhari dasham. Nirhari dasham. Servitor of Nishimha Dev. Servitor of Nishimha Dev. Pralad. Pralad. Eva like. Eva like. Asurani. Asurani. Weapons employed by the demons. Weapons employed by the demons. 
Translation, great generals like Bhishma, Drona, Karna, Bodhisrava, Susharma, Shalya, Jayadra, and Balika all directed their invincible weapons against me. But by his, Lord Krishna's, grace, they could not even touch a hair on my head. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj, the supreme devotee of Lord Nishimhadev, was unaffected by the weapons the demons used against him. Please repeat. Great generals like Bhishma. Great generals like Bhishma. Drona. Drona. Karna. Karna. Bodhisrava. Bodhisrava. Susharma. Susharma. Shalya. Shalya. Jayadra. Jayadra. And Bahalika. Bahalika. All directed their invincible weapons. All directed their invincible weapons against me. Against me. But by his, but by his Lord, Krishna's, Lord Krishna's grace, they could not even touch a hair on my head. Similarly, Similarly Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj <coughs> the supreme devotee, the supreme devotee of, Lord of Lord Nishingadev, was unaffected, was unaffected by the weapons by the, weapons the demons used against him. Purport by his divine grace, Sita Prabhupada. And it's a long purport, so I will give instructions just to read a part of it. So we're going to hear a little bit about some of these great generals, these great heroes, and then be, to be continued tomorrow. So, Jai Shri Prabhupada. The history of Pallad Maharaj, the great devotee of Nishingadev, is narrated in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Pallad Maharaj, a small child of only five years, became the object of envy for his great father, Harani Kashipu, only because of his becoming a pure devotee of the Lord. The demon father employed all his weapons to kill the devotee son, Pallad, but by the grace of the Lord he was saved from all sorts of dangerous actions by his father. He was thrown into fire, in boiling oil from the top of a hill underneath the legs of an elephant and he was administered poison. At last the father himself took up a chopper to kill his son and thus Nishingadev appeared and killed the heinous father in the presence of the son. Thus no one can kill the devotee of the Lord. Similarly, Arjuna was also saved by the Lord, although all dangerous weapons were employed by his great opponents like Bhishma. Then Prabhupada describes Karna. Born of Kunti by the sun god prior to her marriage with Maharaj Pandu, Karna took his birth with bangles and earrings, extraordinary signs for an undaunted hero. In the beginning, his name was Vasusena, but when he grew up, he presented his natural bangles and earrings to Indradev. This is very condensed highlights here of Karna's history. And then, thenceforward, he became known as Vai, Vaikartana. After his birth from the maiden Kunti, he was thrown in the Ganges. Later, he was picked up by Adhira, and he and his wife Radha brought him up as their own offspring. Karna was very charitable, especially toward the Brahmanas. There was nothing he could not spare for a Brahmana. In the same charitable spirit, he gave in charity his natural bangles and earrings to Indradev, who, being very much satisfied with him, gave him in return a great weapon called Shakti. He was admitted as one of the students of Dronacharya, and from the very beginning there was some rivalry between him and Arjuna. Seeing his constant rivalry with Arjuna, Duryodhana picked him up as his companion, and this gradually grew into greater intimacy. He was also present in the great assembly of Draupadi's Swayamvara function, and when he attempted to exhibit his talent in that meeting, Draupadi's brother declared that Karna could not take part in the competition because of his being the son of a sudra carpenter. Although he was refused in the competition, 
Still, when Arjuna was successful in piercing the fish target on the ceiling, and Draupadi bestowed her garland upon Arjuna, Karna and the other disappointed princes offered an unusual stumbling block to Arjuna while he was leaving with Draupadi. Specifically, Karna fought with him very valiantly, but all of them were defeated by Arjuna. Diodin was very much pleased with Karna because of his constant rivalry with Arjuna. And when he was in power, he enthroned Karna in the state of Anga. Being baffled in his attempt to win Draupadi, Karna advised Diodin to attack King Drupada. For after defeating him, both Arjuna and Draupadi could be arrested. But Diodin rebuked him for this, rebuked them for this conspiracy, and they refrained from the action. Karna was defeated many times, not only by Arjuna, but also by Bhimasen. He was the king of the kingdom of Bengal, Orissa, and Madras combined. Later on, he took an active part in the Rajasuya sacrifice of Maharaj Yudhishthir. And when there was a gambling between the rival brothers, designed by Shapuni, Karna took part in the game, and he was very pleased when Draupadi was offered as a bet in the gambling. This fed his old grudge. When Draupadi was in the game, he was very enthusiastic to declare the news, and as he who entered, who ordered Dushishan to take away the garments of both the Pandavas and Draupadi. He asked Draupadi to select another husband because being lost by the Pandavas, she was rendered a slave of the Kurus. He was always an enemy of the Pandavas, and whenever there was an opportunity, he tried to curb them by all means. During the battle of Kurukshetra, he foresaw the conclusive result, and he expressed his opinion that due to Lord Krishna's being the chariot driver of Arjuna, the battle should be won by Arjuna. He always differed with Bhishma, and sometimes he was proud enough to say that within five days he could finish up the Pandavas if Bhishma would not interfere with his plan of action. But he was very much mortified when Bhishma died. He killed Gotachak with the Shakti weapon obtained from Indradev. His son Rishasen was killed by Arjun. He killed the largest number of Pandavas soldiers. At last, there was a severe fight with Arjuna, and it was he only who was able to knock off the helmet of Arjuna. But it so happened that the wheel of his chariot stuck in the battlefield mud, and when he got down to set the wheel right, Arjuna took the opportunity and killed him, although he requested Arjuna not to do so. And then Prabhupada goes on to talk about somebody else. <clears throat> Nupita, or Bodhisattva, is being described next, but I was asked only to read to here. So, <clears throat> this is kind of like, uh, uh, we should have Sankirtan Prabhu should be standing outside selling his copies of the Mahabharata. For those of you that are going, well, how did that happen? What happened then? Oh, that sounds interesting. Well, you have to read the full book. So. Om Ajnana Tamyanda Shadinan Anjana Shalakaya Chakshu Omani Tamyana Tasmai Shri Guru Nama Shri Tetana Marobishtam Stati Tamyana Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Svapanam Tikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuni Chananda Shri Advaita Gadarha Shri Vati Gaur Matavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 so it's always a pleasure to be back in New Vrindavan. I was driving in, I was thinking, I was just here recently. And I was, I was here for when we had the, the mantra retreat. We had the mantra retreat just a few months ago here. So it's nice to have so many reasons to come to New Vrindavan. I live in Maryland and it's it's also, some of us fly here. Rishni, you, what, flew from Hawaii? Yes. Yeah, it's a much greater sacrifice. <clears throat> the drive from Maryland is, is quite nice through the the woods and the trees, and it's quite a peaceful drive. It's always wonderful to come here. The deities here are so wonderfully beautiful, and I only go two places in my travels. Nishingadev is there in Mayapur, and he's here. I know there's also Nishingadev deity in Germany, 
maybe a few other places, but I only get to see him here, so it's always special. Mercy to have Lord Nishinganev's darshan. Last time I was here, I took a picture of his lotus foot on my phone, so. <clears throat> I'm on an airplane that starts going like this. I flip to my pictures real quick. Okay, Lord Nishinganev, I take shelter. Please let this plane land. <coughs> so, <clears throat> this is a, like all the sections of the Bhagavatam, it's so, it's so interesting. Because we know it's the story of the pastimes of the all beautiful personality of God. And so all of his different leelas are very interesting, and very attractive, and it's unfortunate that the minds of materialistic people also are looking for excitement, they're also looking for drama, they're also looking for romance, they're also looking for chivalry and intrigue and all these different things. And it's there uh, in the Bhagavatam, of course here we're getting condensed version of the, of the Mahabharata in part by reading about the Pandavas, but the people just had the opportunity to hear how attractive Lord Krishna's pastimes are, then as Prabhupada described so many places, and then all the Acharya's reference to teaching the Bhagavatam explained, then, then the attraction for, for other things just falls away because there's so much less, so much less attractive, so much less interesting. It's actually kind of quite boring the heroes they have today, nothing like the heroes that we're studying and learning about. <clears throat> so in this, in this chapter, in this particular section, the Pandavas retired timely, we're, we're hearing um, how Lord Krishna has, has left the earth planet, his departure, and how he arranged himself to leave after he arranged for the, for the demise, the departure of the Yadu dynasty. And we're about to read how now then the Pandavas are also leaving. They're wrapping up their time, their manifested pastimes here on earth in service to the Lord. And here we're particularly reading about Arjuna is revealing, to set the context, Arjuna is, is revealing to Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira had a sense when Arjuna was gone, he came back, and Yudhishthira is very concerned because Arjuna looks very depressed and he's seen so many bad omens. So he's asking, he's asking Arjuna, well, is this wrong? Or did this happen? Or did you, did you fail to fulfill your Chatriya duties? Or this, maybe that? He's kind of, like sometimes we say, nibbling around the corners. He has a feeling Krishna's departed, but he doesn't want to directly ask that. It'd be too painful. So is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And then Arjuna is answering him in this chapter. Actually, yeah, Lord Krishna has left. He's, he's wrapped up his, his, his manifest pastimes here. And so we're able to, through these verses, understand a little bit of the mood of a pure devotee and of the intensity of affection and attachment and connection that devotees have with Krishna that we also each have with Krishna when we've reawakened that original connection. Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, he comes again and again into this world to annihilate the miscreants, to protect the devotees, to reestablish the principles of religion, and to reveal his pastimes and, and his teachings and the teachings of his devotees to, to, to kind of re-energize all of those. Why? to again give us the chance to connect with Him. That's what the ultimate purpose of, of life is, is to reconnect, is with yoga, the meaning of yoga, to connect again with the divinity, especially and ultimately through the process of bhakti, to, to reconnect with Krishna. So all these different pastimes and these instructions, they're all meant to help us reconnect. So here we're getting some insight of what it actually means to be connected, of Arjuna's intense feelings of separation when the Lord has, uh, particularly here, when, when the Lord has left, so they're feeling this great mood of separation. And specifically in the last few verses, Arjuna is recalling how the Lord Krishna protected him. And we have to think, keep in mind, who is Arjuna? As we did, as described here, he was this great warrior who defeated Bhishma. Bhishma was invincible. Nicho Prabhu was describing in his uh, very wonderful and colorful class yesterday some more of this history. And Bhishma, 
by the, by the blessing of his father, and that, of course, is a whole long story, was so powerful, he could not die unless he chose to. He's just one of the people that Arjuna is fighting. And, and Karna was in many ways invincible. In some ways, probably describing he was defeated many times by Arjuna, but there are other times when Karna manifested that he possibly could even defeat Arjuna. These were not simple challenges that he had. But Arjuna, as a very, very, very great warrior, he overcame all of these obstacles, and yet now he's particularly expressing his understanding of how dependent he always was on Krishna. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to think, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I live in the city, you see people strutting sometimes. I don't know if they do that in the country, but in the city, you see them strutting. Sometimes they get, you come up to some stop sign in Washington DC and somebody like walks across the street really slowly, just to let you know that they have the power to walk slowly and you can't move until they get off the street. And it's like, you know, you just think like, wow, this person's pretty desperate if that's all they can manifest, my power. You know, we all have some sense that we want to have power, manifest a power, and you feel, you feel sorry for people like that. He's got such little influence in the world that he has to, like, show me while the lights turn green that actually, you know, you can't go until I let you go. So Arjuna was not like that. He had a lot of power, inconceivable power. And it's described here in, in, in some of these verses just read. He fought with Indra. He defeated Indra. He fought with Shiva to the point he impressed Lord Shiva himself so much so that he gave him his weapons. He gave him his blessings. He defeated all these chapters and he won Draupadi. So many, again and again and again, he's describing how he was uh, so successful, but he's realizing only because of Krishna's mercy. So sometimes, you know, we tend to think under the influence of the material energy that, you know, I've achieved so many things, or again, I live in Washington, so sometimes go to these events, and you know, you just look at these people, it's like, they're so bewildered. You know? They really, it's like, you kind of hear some people speak sometimes, you think, you actually think you're a senator. You know, like you're sitting in a chair that's been there for like 200 plus years, and there's been probably 60, 70, maybe 60 people in that chair, or 50 or 40, something like But you're actually thinking, that's my chair. I'm the senator from the exalted state of Maine, or West Virginia, or Florida. I am. You know, it's like, well, wait, excuse me. I was here like a couple years ago, there was a different name on the wall. And, you know, you just blink and there's going to be a different name on the same wall. You know, they, they put up your little brass, brass plaque, the Honorable Senator so-and-so. And they, you know, then some guy comes along making $15 an hour and he unscrews it, takes off your name, throws it in the trash, puts somebody else's name up there. So how powerful are you? So the influence of the material world. You know, people that have a lot of money or some kind of social status or beauty or knowledge, but it's all flickering. So Arjuna here, even though he was so powerful, he's teaching us, don't be bewildered by that power. Don't think I'm so powerful. Or I'm just like sometimes, you know, I can go to India. The boys have a lot of connections in India, a lot of important. So sometimes the devotees like, you know, yeah, chief minister, you know, home minister, this minister, and that minister. It's like, yeah, you have all those contacts, you know, until your phone dies, right? Or until you die, or until they die, right? So it's very nice. You can use that in Krishna's service, but keep in mind where the power comes from. So that's Arjuna's realization that he's sharing with us now. I defeated so many, like he's saying here, Drona, Bhishma, Karna, Susharma, Jayadrat, all these great, great, great soldiers. You know, we had seven Ak Akshayinis, they had 11. They had Bhishma, who's the grandfather. They had Dronacharya, who's my teacher, my own teacher, who's so powerful. Whatever tricks I know, I learned from him. He's on the other side. But we won. And how did we win? We won, he's explained, uh, from Krishna, because of Krishna's mercy. And then in this verse, he's given the example, just like Pallad Maharaj. Pallad Maharaj, Prabhupada elaborates a little bit, uh, thrown in boiling oil, thrown in a fire, thrown from the top of a hill, underneath the legs of an elephant, administered poison, so many things, but nobody could defeat him. 
because Lord Nishingadev was protecting him. So, um, and we all know the story, you know, it's more elaborate. So Arjuna's making that example how he was also saved. So in his purport, Prabhupada is explaining in a very condensed format about Karna. And he actually was a great hero, but I was speaking with Sankatan just for a few minutes before the class. I asked him a little bit of clarification from some other part of the uh, Karna story, the Mahabharata. And he said, yeah, that's, that, that, that's part of it. And I mentioned Karna, and, and Sankatan immediately said, a very tragic figure. Very tragic. I, I, I hope that someday I can, among many things, sit at Prabhupada's feet and have him explain to me Karna, because I don't completely understand Karna's the complexity. He was the firstborn of Kunti. He should have gotten a kingdom. But somehow or other, by the twist of fate, isn't it? His problem is he, he had to be abandoned by his mother because she wasn't married and you know what she's supposed to do it would be terrible embarrassment especially in that time so she puts her baby in this little basket he floats downstream and he's 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 uh, captured by was Adidrat is that who you know is a, 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 a childless so they raise this child with so much love some places they use the name for Karna Radheya because he had so much affection his mother was so affectionate you know, his adopted mother. It was like this whole, probably all kinds of stuff we could look at in terms of step parents or adopted parents and stuff. You know, such a great deep relationship. And yet, because of that, that was a curse because he had this desire. He was really a chatra, but he was born in this <coughs> lower family, not such illustrious family. And that became like something that cursed him throughout his life. But he put up with so many obstacles, but then he got, he was, a, he, he was envious of the Pandavas, but he was the eldest brother of the Pandavas. And we know at the end, Kunti came to him and said, hey, excuse me, you know, you to, uh, actually, I need to tell you something. You're my son. And isn't that wonderful? Because now we just tell the world and you can become the king. And then everybody at Diodin will have to get along because you're the king. And the Pandavas will accept you because you're the elder brother. And isn't this a wonderful ending? He said, sorry, mother, can't do it. We can spend some short time together. There's a beautiful play that's done sometimes with Kunti meeting Karna. For this short, it's like it's the most one of the most heart wrenching scenes you can ever see. He says, "I can't do it. It's too complex. It's gone too far, and you're a little late." And by the way, I wish you told me this a long time ago because I've been suffering my whole life. But I can understand. Let's not go there. Use an English American <laughs> phrase. Let's not go there. You know. And then even Krishna came to him. Hmm. Krishna came to him and said, Karna, you know, you're actually the eldest Pandava. And we don't need this war. You can just take over the kingdom and everything's fine. But something I just heard not too long ago, that Karna actually told him, no, but see, see, Krishna, here's the problem. If you give me the kingdom, certainly Yudhisthira will give it to me. I have no doubt Yudhisthira will give me the kingdom. But I'm sworn to Duryodhana. So you give me the kingdom, I have to give it to him. And then everything, I don't know if he directly said this, but the implication, everything you've tried to achieve or you are achieving here, just won't work. Because then Duryodhana becomes the king, all these sacrifices, and we end up with this guy on the throne who really shouldn't be there. So I have to fight. And I know I'm going to die. And thanks for coming. But I have to do what I have to do. I mean, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. So, all to help us. Like, wow. I mean, people are reading from the outside, like, who is this Krishna? I mean, even when people that aren't devotees and they do renditions of Mahabharata and drama, they did that drama a few years ago and, and Broadway and all that, it's like, they always leave them this question, who is this Krishna? Who just kind of appears and disappears and who's so respected, but they're not quite sure. What is he, what is, what is this personality? Is he a personality or just a force? And all to help bring people closer to Krishna. The whole purpose to make people closer to Krishna. But here, we're so fortunate, we're hearing from Arjuna, who's revealing some of these inner secrets, because his realization is Krishna is the one who's behind the whole scenes, turning the wheel of time. Krishna is time, he's turning the wheel of time. And ultimately now he's telling Yudhisthira, now I see Krishna's gone, I have nothing. I'm brokenhearted because of my, my feelings of separation. 
But all this power I had, I was thinking I was so great, my Gandiva bow, and I defeated so many wars. It wasn't me, it was Krishna. I'm completely dependent on So he's revealing that to us. It's, it's again, this beautiful Bhagavatam lets us learn from the wonderful stories. Just like postmodern stuff. You know, postmodern stories, oftentimes it's the good guy turns out to be a bad guy, the bad guy actually wasn't so bad after all. Ultimately, everybody dies, everybody's bad, and it's like you go home depressed. You know, and that's like the modern story, whether it's a book or a TV show or a movie. People are immersing themselves in these kind of things. And for us, there's all these twists and turns, and oh, Quinty Davy, and she suffered so much, and the Pandavas, they suffered in Arjuna, oh my gosh, and Grandfather Bhishma, he had to die, and that's not really fair, and Karna, he should have been here. But it's okay. Because we're spiritual. And it's all meant to teach us this is not our home. And all this drama and this tension and this pain and the joy and the matras parsas to kunteya, it's all meant to help us understand actually it's a temporary place, just get connected to Krishna. And then the world makes sense, even suffering has some purpose. The ultimate destiny of every living being is to return to Krishna. And let's just all take shelter to him, and life will be a much, much better much better experience, you know. Prabhupada said, just become Krishna conscious and enjoy life with a thrill at every moment. It doesn't mean there won't be ups and downs, but still he said, you enjoy life with a, like with a thrill at every moment through our Krishna consciousness. So, Arjuna is explaining, he's realizing even more how dependent he is on Krishna and all of his, his, his blessings. And I was reminded of a sign I saw years ago. One of the reasons I love to come to West Virginia and New Vrindavan is like, always says, I'm driving on the road, I get to pass by a few churches. <clears throat> and every once in a while, I've mentioned this before, I indulge myself and listen to some talk radio, and, and the conservative talk radio, to see what the other side of the world thinks from where I live. But mostly I like to read the, the, the things on the front of the churches because there's often such great wisdom, uh, you know, from a, like a different culture than the, you know, sophisticated city people. You know, we're in Vrindavan, we're kind of surrounded by villages in West Virginia too. And one of the great things I learned, when, when there was on front of one church one time, it said, when you're down to nothing, you know the end, remember I mentioned this once before, when you're down to nothing, that means God is up to something. <laughs> Very profound, isn't it? Same philosophy here. And that one simple kind of, you know, down-home words of wisdom, it's captured an essential teaching of the Bhagavatam, which is behind the scenes, Krishna is there. God is there. When we go through some difficulties, we should keep in mind that Krishna is there. And I think that's a very, very important uh, lesson for us all, that we also go through difficulties. All of us, sometimes we go through difficulties. Sometimes they're so great, it's hard to understand how is it possible that behind this all, Krishna is there, and Krishna actually is intended to uplift me or uplift others. Sometimes it's very, 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 very difficult to understand. I remember uh, years ago, during one of the Festival of Inspiration events here at New Vrindavan, one of the devotees, I think Archana Siddhi Mataji, was giving a presentation about, you know, kind of playing off that book pretty well-known book a few years ago, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. There was some slightly different um, title there. So in the room, she kind of had people go around and talk about some of the challenges they faced and, and how they made it through and ultimately how, you know, Krishna was there. And one lady spoke who lost a child in a tragic accident. And everybody was kind of speaking about, you know, I failed this year in high school or you know, my grandmother died unexpectedly, or, you know, those kind of things. But then this one woman spoke, devotee woman, about how her child had died. And it was so gut-wrenching to hear her say this. And, and you kind of felt like, wow, whatever li little difficulties I've experienced are so insignificant according to the pain that she must have gotten. And I remember kind of twisting and turning in my chair thinking, how... How is the facilitator going to try to bring her around to saying, okay, was there some good in that? Or did you learn something from that? And I would, and everybody was like, frankly, as I recall, people were like crying. You know, and you're a devotee, and why did you have to suffer so much? It's like the Pandavas, like, they're devotees. Why did they suffer so much? Kunti, why so much suffering? 
the pure devotee. Mm. You know, Arjuna, all oh, that, why so much suffering? So this one lady, remember the very end of it, she said something to effect. She said, I, I'll, I'll never pr probably understand, as I recall, I may not have it right, there's no recording, but the impression it made on me. She said, I'll never understand how, you know, this was, this was really mercy. And I, I may never understand why my child had to die. I think they were like a teenager. They went, wasn't a baby, but still young in their, before even their prime of life. And she was explaining, she, I remember her saying, I, I cut off an arm, or maybe two, or give my life just to let my child have their life again. And you know, people cry and cry, it's like, it got worse. And then she said, but there's, if there's anything I've learned from this. She said, I'm getting a little glimpse. If I love my child so much, and I feel so much pain in their separation, how much Krishna must love us? At which point, everybody started. You know. it, was, it was so profound. It was so profound. You know, you don't even want to comment on that. I, would, I, I My insight failed to have sufficient insight to even reflect on that. But that was her. She shared that with you know, a group of 20 devotees. So through that pain, she'd just come to an understanding that if I have so much love, I mean, you know, small spirit soul connected to one of my children. There's so much intense love. How much love Krishna must have for me and for all of us. So through these readings we see, uh, back to the Bhagavatam, we see that through this, uh, with the Pandavas, crisis after crisis after crisis, and Arjuna is, is sharing that actually, and now I can see behind all of that, it was Krishna's blessing, it was Krishna's power that kept me going. Mm -hmm. So, important lesson for all of us. So, I was thinking maybe just to open up uh, to if some of the devotees, and not, I'm not gonna go around and call on people, but if anybody might like to share uh, some experience that you've had, because we, we learn from each other, with, we know association devotees is so essential, and part of that is because when we hear from other uh, fellow travelers in this world, fellow devotees, how Krishna's acting in their lives um, and how they struggle, as we all do from time to time, in, in keeping our faith in the Lord and struggle through the, sometimes the difficulties or the temptations or the problems that we face, but by associating with each other and hearing from each other and by hearing from your strengths, it helps me feel more stronger. So. Anybody like to share a story of any kind at all? It certainly doesn't need to be of the intensity of the one I just described about this Vaishnavi. But how you face some challenges, and you can be as specific as you want, or not so specific, but a little more specific. Though. And how you realize that behind the whole thing, Krishna was there. And it was pretty tough, but actually, one sense it was good for me, and at the very least, it really showed me he was there. Anybody want to share any stories like that? Yes, Prabhu. I don't know, did we do an extra microphone here? Or what did we do? Because he's still recording. Do we have an extra mic? Just not coming. I'll speak loud. Hear he, hear he. <laughs> I was just reflecting. Uh, when you mentioned that story about this this woman losing her child, and, uh, and I haven't really experienced that myself, you know, even even in close friends or not not so much, you know, the death experience. But but I think we get a glimpse of it even in, amongst the Bodhi Association. We become uh, enlivened by certain devotees, not necessarily every devotee we meet, but we develop these close relationships. And then when there's uh, situations where devotees leave, move to other locations, and uh, it seems like, wow, we start to think back and how, how much we appreciated that association. And um, 
And then when that occurs again and again over the decades, it's almost like, and then we hear about, you know, the spiritual world and kind of like everyone's together. And, <laughs> and uh, of course, Krishna is at the center of all of this. So, but the principle of separation is, is uh, there's, like a, there's like a dual, as long as there's like a, 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 some, a duality in it, it seems like it's, it's both pleasurable and painful. So I, I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Well, I want to kind of hear a few more stories. That's a nice realization you're sharing, how we see over the years how dependent we are in our relationships with devotees and our affection for devotees and sometimes we don't really realize the blessing until they're gone. I, I was uh, in Africa a few years ago in Ghana and teaching a communications course and there was one young devotee, African devotee from Nigeria, his name was Ani Ruda and he was one of those young people you think, wow, this person is destined to do a lot. It's just he was asking questions before I even got to that section. And everything that we, you know, sharing different skills and outlooks on how to interact with people. And you can see he's got it. He's ready to go. He'd come up later and he's sharing me, sharing with me different plans. You know, I've got an opportunity to meet this important person in Nigeria and this and that. And I was just thinking, he was a disciple of Bhakti Tirtamraj. And I, it was like, I left there thinking, this is why I came here. Well, not, not fully, but a big part. Well, this is really a blessing uh, of Krishna on me to help inspire this young man a little bit, give him more skills. And I went back to America, and three weeks later or so, a month or that he died in a car accident. And I just thought, this is a tragedy for our movement. Such a young, smart, bright, strong guy. To, you know, Krishna has his plans. But again, you know, feeling like, oh, you know, such a loss. Any personal stories? Did you, was it like a personal story? You maybe you take the mic about how maybe we face some challenges, but behind the scenes, Krishna was there. Yeah, this one, uh, it's one of those laughable ones after the fact, but uh, so I had met devotees when I was studying at the university and college, and prior to that, though, I had kind of maintained a relationship with a significant other for some years through high school and then that relationship had turned sour and obviously like we may have experienced with others it was very devastating and you don't know how you can go on with life da, 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 da. but then a year later or so is when i met the devotees and it wasn't until reflecting years after that experience that you can kind of be grateful for that because if you're, as we've experienced with other couples, maybe one person becomes interested in Krishna consciousness, but like the family members or the spouse or whatever becomes like an anchor or some obstacle because they don't want, they're not interested and so then they can deter some potential devotee from really taking up the process seriously or something like that. So it wasn't until years later I was kind of grateful for that experience because had I, you know, continued that relationship and then met the devotees, they could even say, ah, oh, I'm not interested in this or whatever. And because the attachment to that person is so strong mm -hmm. over the little bit of interest you have in the devotees and spiritual life, you know, that can really change your trajectory. Nice. So I was kind of... Very nice. That's a great example. <coughs> Anyone else? I'll just mention. And for those out there, because they are recording, I don't know how far it's going, but for those beyond the community who don't know you, now you're married, you have a very devoted and lovely devotee wife and a beautiful child, and Krishna had a lot of other things intended. Yeah. Anybody else want to share something? Yes, but they're approval. I hope it's something it's related. Yeah, I think it's but um something with keeping faith. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I was here from the ninety six to two thousand, so then I, I went over to uh some some kind of uh to Columbus, Ohio. So I started living there for five years. And there was a 
So the doors were living around the block. I was too. And there was a young lady down the street. So probably in her twenties. She's very uh, nice, nice character. You know, she's very humble, so very introspective, quiet, very quiet person, but very friendly, smiling. God, she came regularly to the temple. So and somehow, and then there, then there, uh, she was going to get married with a devotee uh, from uh, down in uh, Athens, right? And the idea was that they they came to New Rwanda for the festival of inspiration. It was years, I don't know how many years ago, but one of the earlier ones. So they came here, and she came with some lady friends, and they were the, the plan was to bring her back to Athens. They were driving down to Athens for the wedding or something like that. And on the way they had a car crash. Mm -hmm. After the festival of inspiration, the driver fell asleep, tired. And I think Mr. Jesus probably remember that one, you know. And it was just like you know, I knew her quite well. And I was like, God, she's seen that was so nice person. And she's about to get married. And like, you know, I know Christian was you're there and always doing the best for everybody. But it was a hard struggle for me to quite figure that out. But then I realized I can't figure it out. Mm. But anyway, I'm going to comment on it. Because it's probably still within me a little bit. Like, mm. You know. Mm. Yeah, it actually kind of <clears throat> it, it actually kind of brings up another point, which is so many times we we gain faith through the the challenges, and, and there are other times that we don't necessarily understand. You know, I mean, I don't understand why did this young man die. I, you know, it's like, hey, if I in my perfect world. He lives to be 100 years old. He does all kinds of stuff and spreads Christian consciousness all over. She's like, Krishna, what did you do that for? I don't know. You know. So there are sometimes as faithful devotees, we can see where Krishna's acting in certain ways. Sometimes we can't see. Sometimes we can't see, but part of being devotees is, is understanding having that faith that, that Krishna's there is behind, behind everything and ultimately he's bringing us back to him. Um, I just want to go to the conclusion of this section, actually, which is when Arjuna goes through a series of more verses and ex explains his feelings of, 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 of separation and his realization how he's dependent upon Krishna, etc. But he's also feeling so distraught. And then he says this, <clears throat> verse 27, just the English. Now I'm attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of God in Govinda because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. Isn't that beautiful? Read that again. Now I am attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of God in Govinda, because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. And then a little bit from the purport. Prabhupada said, The merciful Lord left behind him the great teachings of Bhagavad Gita so that one can take the instructions of the Lord even when he is not visible to material eyesight. Material senses cannot have any estimation of the Supreme Lord, but by his inconceivable power, the Lord can incarnate himself to the sense perception of the conditioned souls in a suitable manner through the agency of matter, which is also another form of the Lord's manifested energy. Thus, the Bhagavad Gita, or any authentic scriptural sound representation of the Lord, is also the incarnation of the Lord. There is no difference between the sound representation of the Lord and the Lord Himself. One can derive the same benefit from the Bhagavad Gita as Arjuna did in the personal presence of the Lord. So Arjuna is in his great separation. Then he's saying, now again, I'm attracted to and I'm taking shelter of those instructions of the Lord. And Prabhupada is explaining, reminding us, we also can take shelter of those same instructions. As Arjuna says, beautiful, because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. So, 
that's our shelter. Krishna's there, Krishna's there in his instructions. But to our last question or comment, and then we'll... Yeah, just, it's just a little Please. quick, I forgot to say that about that, that event that happened to that young lady, uh, that actually she was air, airlifted, air, air, air life flighted over to the Columbus Medical Center. After that happened, I don't know where it happened. And she was leaving her body, but she was still there. And who but, who but anybody in that emergency room was uh, Premier Velasquez. Uh, oh, Premier Velasquez was yeah, there. Yeah, Premier Velasquez was his wife, who was a doctor also. And she was there yeah, with her at the time her. to leave her body. So, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, a little, a little interesting, just kind of example of Krishna's there some way or other, sometimes we don't understand. Um, some of you may know uh, Nishringa Nanda Prabhu, no, Nishringa Kavacha Prabhu, who is the minister of deity worship. So, long story short, he recently was, I think in London, there was some medical emergency, they had to do a, a, an operation, he had a big tumor in his stomach, they didn't know if it was cancerous or whatever, so he was going into the operating room, and <clears throat> I don't know quite how it worked, but, but anyway, he, I guess he wasn't sure who his surgeon was going to be. So he's the minister of deity worship, okay? The minister of deity worship. He meets the surgeon, Indian man. His name, guess what his name was? I might, now I'm thinking I might have it right, but I got 99% right. Krishna Murti. He's the minister of deity worship. And Krishna sends a surgeon named Krishna Murti. So he said, at that point I was thinking, if I live, I live. If I go, I go. Obviously the Lord's got a plan. <laughs> he said, then it's their deity worship. And he gets the surgeon named Krishna Murti. And he survived and he's doing quite well now after the operation. So it's nine o'clock, we'll stop there. Thank you all for your kind attention. Shita Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Shri Aramitam Chandra Ki Jai. Gaur Pemanadi. Hari Haribo. Anatama Prabhu Ki Precious Christ.